In this video, I will show you five advanced array methods in JavaScript. Every. The every method checks if every element in an array passes a test which is provided in a function. Let's have a look at the example. We have our numbers one through four. And in the first test that we're making, we're checking if every element is greater than two, obviously not. And that's why we get back the Boolean of false. So every, the return value, what it answers us is with a Boolean, either false or true. Now in our second test, I named this fittingly more tests here. We're using the every function again, but this time we're using the arrow function. So that's why the writing is a little bit different. And in all of the examples in this video, you will always find the traditional function way of writing and the newer, the more modern arrow function. So with more tests, we see that this time we're checking if the number is greater or equal to one. And we get back a true because all of the numbers are either greater or in the case of number one, it's equal to one. So every gives us back a Boolean, either false or true. Sum. The sum method checks if at least one of the elements in the array passes the provided test. Again, we have numbers this time one till six, and we're saying in our first example here, we're saving the return value to the variable of even we're saying with the sum function, go and give me back the numbers that have modulo two equals zero, meaning that are even. And since there is at least one of the elements where that is the case, meaning one of the numbers is even, we get back true. And the lower example, even arrow, I've named, I've named this variable. Again, it, check it's, it checks for sum, and we're doing actually the exact same thing. I'm just showing you how to write it with the arrow function. And obviously it will give us back true because at least one of the elements in our array is even. Map. The map function creates a new array. And what does it put in it? Well, it takes all of the elements from the original array, and then it does whatever that I define with it in the function that I pass in with the map method. In this case, I've decided to multiply every single element of the original array by two. So the return value is going to be that it's going to be all of the separate elements multiplied by two. Now we see the lower example here is the arrow function way of writing the exact same thing of using the map method to multiply each element with two. Reduce. The reduce method executes a reduce function on the elements of the array. Now I find the easiest way to explain how this method works is by calculating the sum of all of the elements in our numbers array. So we have numbers from one till four. And when we use the reduce method on our numbers array, what happens is that it takes each and every one of these um, elements in our arrays and it calculates them together. And we're passing in two parameters, accumulator and current value. Now you can think of the accumulator as that of what it has calculated up until now. And the current value, the current element that it is taking to add it to the accumulator. So since we're not adding um, a beginning or an initial value, it will simply start with one. So it says it takes one, and then it takes one and two. So in that case, the accumulator is one, current value is two, that equals to three. So three is going to be the accumulator on the next element. And our next element itself, the current value is three, and so on and so forth, until it goes through all of the elements. And that's why we get back here a return value of 10. Because that's what you would get if you were to calculate all of these numbers together. Now, Again, the lower example is the exact same thing, just using the arrow function. It's really up to you if you prefer the traditional function or the arrow function. In, in this example, it makes no difference. It 
just looks a little bit differently. I personally still prefer the original way of writing um, functions and using methods, but this is up to you. I just show you both examples so that you can choose. Flat. The flap method creates a new array and it takes the original array and concatenates the different subarrays. Sounds super, super complex. Let's have a look at our first example here, students. We have an array that has elements and one of those elements in itself, again, is an array. So what if we want to have all of these names, these elements in the same array, kind of like on the same level, not one higher and one lower. That's where we use flat. We simply say students stop flat and then all of the four names are in the same array and there's no subarray anymore. Now with hobbies, we're doing something else because here we have an array that has an array that has an array. So we have multiple levels of arrays. And when we pass in an, a number here, in this case, hobbies stop flat two, it means depth two. So it will take those two sub arrays and kind of like lift them into this main array. At least that's how I like to see it. That's how it looks for me visually. Okay. So flat without passing in any number will default to one. That's why we didn't have to say in our students example, flat one, because it's counting with one, with one level of depth anyway. And it kind of like lifted that sub array into our main array. But if we have more levels, more subarrays, then we can pass in a number when we're using the flat method. You've learned the basics of these five advanced JavaScript methods, but a lot of these methods take optional parameters, which you can use to further manipulate or work on your arrays. My question to you is which of these methods would you like to get to know better? Let me know so I can make an in-depth video about that method. By the way, there's two more videos about arrays and I'll be linking them at the end of this video. Please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming JavaScript or tech videos.